Welcome to 15 Minute Theatre, the only review show that squeezes a whole production into 900 seconds. The date is Friday the 7th of May 2020 and we've just been to see Frankenstein online. Open the house! Uh... Hello, Vicky. Hiya. Hiya, love. Still online? Yeah, still online. Virtual Vicky. Yeah, I've got a bit of a dodgy internet connection, so if I cut out, um, I'm sure I shall return. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. So um, so this time we're back at the National, aren't we? Yeah. We went to see uh, Frankenstein, which I really wanted to see at the time, but I think it was one of those where the tickets were incredibly hard to come by. Yeah, they sold up pretty sharpish, didn't they? Yeah. And this is one of the um, gimmicky sort of theatre, wasn't it? Because you've got two main people, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and Johnny Lee Miller. Benedict Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. And they would take it in turns. One one, one night someone would play the monster, the other night someone would play the the Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they did indeed, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, let me give you a bit of information. It was adapted okay. from the book by Mary Shelley, who wrote it um, as a result of a Blue Peter competition. <laughs> what? Mary Shelley didn't. She's... Well, it, was, it wasn't a Blue Peter competition, but it was a competition. Really? Yeah, her really? and her husband. Yeah, her and her husband, Shelley, and a couple of others, I can't remember who they were, uh, they were all, like, holed up together in, uh, you know, in this big old country house over the weekend. And they went, oh, let's all write a spooky story. And she wrote back and stuff. Oh, wow. Did you not know that story? No. Oh, well, there you go. Amazing. Um, it was directed by Danny Boyle, and a uh, designer was Mark Tildesley. Um, and it... It's about two hours running time, I think, more or less. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like I said, it's at the National. Do you want to give us a little bit of a synopsis? Um, so basically, uh, Victor Frankenstein uh, decides to make a person out of people what are already dead. And he does a bit of get, well, we don't see this bit, but anyway, he does a bit of grave robbing, makes this man. And then this guy is really up pretty ugly. And Frankenstein's not really into him, so he abandons him. And this poor... Frank- Can I just point out, I don't yeah. think he abandons him because he's ugly. <laughs> I don't think... I think you're getting confused with the Rocky Horror Show here. <laughs> well, it's not entirely clear why. He just basically runs away from him very quickly at the beginning of this, so you're not entirely sure. And yeah. so poor old Frankenstein's monster, uh, or whatever you want to call him, is basically wandering around friendless... Uh, everyone is horrible to him. He can't. C- communities reject him. He makes one friend that all goes a bit funny, and so eventually he gets back to Frankenstein, and he basically wants friendship, but uh, Frankenstein denies it to him, and it all gets a bit horrible. It does indeed. Okay, so um, I saw the version with um, Benedict playing the monster. Yeah. What did you do? I saw the version with Johnny Lee Miller playing the monster. All right. So um, what did you think? I w- found it really, really engaging. Okay. I, I thought Johnny Lee Miller had really good physicality. Um, at times I sort of felt a, a little bit like the way that he spoke, maybe he was slightly... It, it was a bit someone trying to do an impression of um, someone with learning disabilities. Yeah, it was a little bit my left foot, wasn't it, almost? Yeah, but I do think that he was very, very, very good. And his physicality was amazing and his energy. And I just found the whole thing very, very engaging and I really enjoyed it. What did you think of Benedict? Well, unfortunately, I think he was probably a little bit weak for my liking. Um, all those kind of things that you said, it was kind of ramped up yeah. to 10 for me. 
the, right. the performance was kind of borderline cringeworthy on the kind of disability front for, for me. Yeah. Um, and it didn't get off to the best of starts. Um, I like a story which goes from the start to the finish. And I yeah. felt a bit cheated that we missed all the build up. And I thought that we're going to come back to it. But um, it starts with the birth of the monster, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and then it's like 10 minutes of that. And then, then it turns into like a version of The Lion King. Because it's like there's a big sunrise up above and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. it kind of lost me a bit from there. However, I thought that the supporting cast were brilliant from... Oh, I didn't. Okay. I really, really didn't like the guy that played Frankenstein's dad. Oh, no, I didn't think he was very good he was at all. Terrible. No, but I thought, I thought the... The, the first person he encountered, the old man, the old blind man, I thought he was very good, but he could have been lifted from the original 1930s film. Well, you know who that was, don't you? The guy who played the old blind man. No. He was the guy um, in the bin in Endgame that we went to see with Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, Rankin. really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, he was great. Our friend Christine's friend, no less. Oh, yeah, yeah, him. It was him. Yeah. And once again, we haven't got his name in front of us. No. Hold on, I can give you a name check here. Hi, James here. Just to interject to say that um, the person we were talking about is a wonderful Carl Johnson. Yeah, I thought I thought he was very good indeed. Um, oh gosh, I can't, I can't see his name here. Yeah. I thought all of the supporting cast were good, apart from Frankenstein's dad, who I thought was terrible. Yeah. And Hi, James here. Beyonce just to interject to say that um, constantly from the side person to side we were talking down, about is really a wonderful movie. Carl Other than that, Johnson. I thought everyone else was really good. I thought I thought it was visually very good. Yeah. Um, I mean, Daddy Ball, bless him, he can make a spectacle, not of himself, but of yeah. Peter. You know, he did a good job in the Olympics, and I thought he did a good job here. The set was amazing. Yeah. The way that it moved with them, that one house that dropped down and another house that came out of the floor and yeah. the way they used the revolving set. I just thought the set was brilliant. And it's a difficult task, I would suggest, Frankenstein. It's a, probably a bit like putting on Romeo and Juliet um, in the way that it's one of the most adapted plays. Oh, I'm sorry, books. Yeah. I've been, you know. Yeah, there's so many films of it, isn't there? Yeah. It was very filmic, I thought, this. And I know it was, I think it worked well. I think they shot it well for the theatre. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought it was, I thought it was really well produced. And I think out of all the things that we've watched online so far, this was the one I enjoyed the most. Oh, wow. Oh, good yeah. for you. Interest... But, but, Go on. But maybe that, I did actually, after watching Johnny Lee Miller... I did then watch a little clip of Benedict Cumberbatch, a just yeah. short one, and I did think, oh, yeah, I don't think I could have dealt with yeah, that. Yeah, I do think I got it the wrong way round. And I wanted to do that, but my computer froze, unfortunately, so I never got the chance. But I, I got a feeling it was better the other way round. And a friend, a friend yeah. of the podcast, Hannah, um, she recommended that I watch it uh, the, other, the way you did. But because yeah. I'm so kind, I allowed you to do that. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Thank you. I thought so. Um, that any um, any standout moments for you? Uh, I didn't write down any standout moments. Um, I don't think I don't think there was anything particularly standout. I just just sort of enjoyed the whole thing. Really, I tell you, there I was did... there was one for me. Oh yeah, What's um, that? it was a bit where. Um, and I suppose we can do spoilers because it's it's finished, it's done, and you can't even get yeah. around really else. But um, it was a bit where um, his wife was in the bedroom, and oh, yeah. uh, they were looking for Frankenstein, and suddenly out he popped. Yeah, I did not know he was there. No, yeah, yeah. So that that was. I bet in the theatre that was a bit of a jump scare. Yeah. And there's a very poignant, the very last scene I thought was very poignant as well. I just, it was quite sad. Yeah. Well, it is a uh, sad story. It's a very sad story. Yeah. And, I, um, and I think this was a lot more faithful to the book, which we've seen more in latter years, you know, with uh, our friend Kenny, Kenny Bra Branagh. 
uh, his other B. Yeah. Kenny B. Uh, with Robert De Niro, which I like very much as well. All right, then. Well, shall we um, take a quick break and then we'll come back and score it? Let's do it. All right, so on to our feature, Filling the Void, the never-ending gap between the coronavirus and the reopening of the theatres. Yeah. Um, so what have you been doing? I'll tell you what I've been doing. Okay, tell me what you've been doing. I've been filling out a, th- a survey um, about theatre, about asking when, you know, if we'd be prepared to go back. And just for the record, yes, I would. Um, I want to support our theatre. Obviously, we want to be safe. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite concerned about, you know, how theatre's going to get over this. It's, it's already taken a blow. And I think it's going to struggle for the, for the next year or so. Yeah, saying? I have to say, I do have my concerns because, well, I'm just a bit worried about the old illness. You are a bit like Typhoid Mary, aren't you? You seem to catch well, everything. you know, I've possibly got it and it's horrible. If this yeah. if this is it, it's pretty grim. And and I'm all you know, I'm all right. There's people a lot worse off than me, but I've not enjoyed it at all. Yeah. It's been going on for a few months. So I wouldn't I if you can get it again, I don't want to get it again. But at the same time, obviously I do have a big sense of loyalty. And yeah. I've got fifty pound theatre tokens I need to it's, spend <laughs> that I got for my birthday. Yeah, I've still got some left as well. Yeah, we better remember those. All yeah. right. Um Okay, so shall we score it? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Vicky, do you want to start with performances? Um, well, they were very strong, but as I said, the couple of the cast members, particularly the dad, really let it down. So yeah. I'm going to go for an eight. Okay, I've given it a seven, um, because I do think I've got the thin end of a wedge. Um, yeah. Stage and technical, um, hard to criticise, really. I'm going to give it a nine. I thought it was very impressive. I'm going to give it a 10. Wow, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Uh, narrative and plot? Um, uh, well, I can't really... Can I fault it? I don't think... Can I fault it? No, I'm going to go for a 9. Okay, it gets an 8 for me uh, because I, I was a bit annoyed that they cut out the, the build-up and I do like the build-up, you know. How yeah. he got to, um, you know, how he got involved in it all and stuff. Um, yeah. All right. Um, originality, it gets an eight for me. It's very hard with this to be original, but I think they did a good job. Yeah, I'll go for an eight as well. Good stuff. Um, costume. Um, the, the, well, this isn't more costume, this is more makeup. The only slight yeah, that'll do. I, had, I felt like. Frankenstein always looked like Frank, the monster always looked like his wounds were fresh and they weren't healing. That's my only pet peeve. Right. But, okay. So, but other than that, I go for uh, an eight. Good stuff. It gets an eight from me as well. And was it worth it? Gets a nine from me. Yeah, I'd go for a nine as well. All right, so, um, okay, so I've got the scores in it. It's a star rating of 4.2, which puts it uh, number three on our leaderboard, just above the process and National Treasure, Trevor, um, but just below Wind of the Willows. And I really like Wind of the Willows, so I'm quite happy with that. Okay, I, I preferred Frankenstein, but Wind of the Willows was good fun. So. And it's quite nice yeah. that Endgame is still um, top of our leaderboard, because that was the last... Um, well, I'd play to see, wasn't it? My gosh, can't believe it. Well, let's hope we do get to see some more this year. Um, yeah. Um, so that's the theatre bell. But before we go, Vicky, what are we going to watch next? We're going to watch Anthony and Cleopatra, another national life. Great, we're going to say the national. It. Wonderful. Yeah. And hats off to the national for doing this every week. You know, really, really, really good produ- productions. Really yeah. enjoyed them. All right. So, um, okay, so that is the theatre bell, so we're out of time. The curtain's down, the theatre's dark, and that was 15 Minute Theatre. Good night. Good night.
If you're brave enough to have your theatre production reviewed, please contact us at 15minutetheatre at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter and please rate and review us on iTunes. Thanks for listening.